So, hi. Uh, welcome, everybody, to my presentation about uh, recommending validators using an active learning algorithm. And don't worry, uh, that sounds more scary than it is. I will keep it at a high level and make it accessible for everybody. Before we start, some words about me. Um, I did my PhD in behavioral economics, and I joined Web3 Foundation Research in June 2020. And I'm generally interested in questions about human interactions with the protocol in economic situations. And some examples are um, the parachain auctions, where I wrote some analyses on and published some um, blog posts on. And also, staking, of course, is a very hot topic there, where I'm actually doing a, dot, a lot of data analysis. And I'm also working for quite a while now on this recommendation algorithm together with three colleagues from academia. And I want to show you some of the results today. So as you all know, staking is a core mechanism of Polkadot because it provides the economic security for the relay chain and then thereby the shared security paradigm also for all the parachains. And the key players here are actually the validators that provide the consensus and make sure that the transactions are valid and that the blockchain is well maintained. And therefore, you could kind of say that the validators are actually the backbone of the whole network. And it's very important that we have good validators that are trustworthy and that you know, keep, can keep up with this job. So finding those validators is actually crucial. So let's look at a high level how this is actually working right now. We have a large set of, of uh, validator candidates, and then we have a second group of key uh, participants that are the nominators, and they are submitting what we call preference lists to the chain. Um, that's basically a list of up to 16 validators on Polkadot and up to 24 validators on Kusama to um, which validators they are actually willing to back with their financial stake. And here the incentives are aligned because the validators and the nominators share all the rewards, but they also share all the slashes. So through some mechanism of kind of the wisdom of the crowd, um, it leads to the fact that the, that the aggregated preferences of all these nominators lead to the fact that we have good validators in the active set and that bad validators in, you know, however we want to call it, if they are malicious or if they are not good node operators, are getting kind of disposed of or not actually entering the active set. So here we can see that finding good validators is actually crucial. But it's also hard and tedious um, because we have an overwhelming amount of data. We have right now 297 uh, validators on Polkadot with around 750 waiting. And we have 1,000 validators on Kusama with another 1,000 waiting. And this number just increases in the future when we are scaling the network even more. Then we also have this task is quite complex because there are a lot of different trade-offs between security, decentralization, and performance, which I will uh, explain a little bit later. And on top of this, we know that humans only have limited cognitive resources. So even if you want to spend a lot of time and actually try to um, make the best decision here, because of the overwhelming amount of data and these different trade-offs, it's very hard to make a good selection. On top of this, uh, today, time is the most valuable resource, and we cannot expect that nominators are constantly uh, trying to find the best validators and updating their nominations and so on. So we kind of need to help nominators make good choices and provide some tooling for this. And when I started out with this project, I set myself some goals which I want to achieve with this process. And the first thing is that it should be fast and easy it should be unopinionated, and that is very important. We don't want to make any assumption about any validator before the process starts, because we don't want to favor or disfavor any of the validators. The, the whole um, preferences should really come from the nominators and the nominators' choices. It needs to be adaptive, because the underlying set of active and waiting validators is constantly changing. So we, you know, we need a process that kind of can keep up with this. And ideally, it should be reusable um, to apply it in different areas of the ecosystem, which I will show you um, in a bit. 
So it turns out that an active learning algorithm, as it's based in the multi-criteria decision-making um, academic literature, can actually help us achieve this goal. And for now, we can think about this algorithm as kind of a black box, a magical black box, which interacts with the individual nominator, and it basically asks some question of the, to the nominator. The nominator then answers this question. The algorithm tries to learn and understand what is actually important to the nominator, and there's some back and forth to this. And as a final result, we can propose a list of suitable validators that fit those preferences. And now you may ask, so how does it learn? Let's peek a little bit on a high level into this algorithm. And the answer is pairwise comparisons. And this is a very easy concept. Um, the algorithm simply presents the choice between two different validators. And I made up some example here. We have validator A and validator B. And it presents the, the different criteria of this validator. So for example, here we have average error points which is somewhat an indicator of the performance of the validator. And when we, when we take a very long period of time and take the average, then actually differences mean a little bit. Then we have the self-stake, which is essentially the self-nomination of a validator. And all things being equal, a validator with higher self-stake has more incentive not to get slashed. Then we have the total stake, which generally people want to, or nominators want to decrease as much as possible until the validator is still in the active set, because the nominator is um, paid based on their share of their stake to the, in relative to the total stake, so you, you get more rewards if your share uh, increases. Then we have the commission, which is kind of self-explanatory, that is the service fee that the nominator has to pay for the validator. And generally, nominators want to reduce this as much as possible. But it turns out, when asking nominators about this, there's some certain non-monotonicity here, because many nominators find it very suspicious when the validator has 0% commission. So actually, there's this small kink where actually between 0% commission and maybe 1% commission, people are actually getting more benefit out of it. But then generally, people, of course, want to reduce the commission as much as possible. And then we have the cluster size here. And this is an important aspect of the algorithm that we cannot um, include identity here because we can only work with quantifiable data. And having some notion of reputation or the name of a validator would bias this. So we actually had to show the validators anonymously. But we try to um, get some aspect of this identity out of it. And one of it is the cluster size which essentially means how many nodes does this operator run. And there are, again, different preferences on this. Some people say that a larger operator with many nodes is actually preferable because um, they obviously have high skills to run the infrastructure and they have um, all these kind of skilled experts at the back. But other people might be a little bit concerned about decentralization and want to reduce the cluster size as much as possible, maybe. So these are the different criteria. And when we look at validator A and B here, we can see that validator A actually potentially has a higher uh, performance because the error points are higher, the total stake is lower, and the commission is lower. But we can also see that validator B offers um, more economic security with the self-stake and actually has a smaller cluster size. And when asked, when I would ask this audience or the audience of nominators, I'm pretty sure there would be like a 50-50 split here. And this is actually what the, what the, what the um, algorithm does. It presents this choice to the nominator and then asks, so which one do you prefer? And then the nominator says, for example, validator A. And then it kind of understands, OK, it seems that the performance is um, more important, the cluster size is maybe less important, or actually it's good to have higher cluster size. Then it kind of processes this information. And based on the result, it kind of asks the next question to kind of narrow the preferences down and to really understand more. And this is an iterative process. We can do this back and forth. And at some point, the algorithm learned enough. And then it can create a recommendation. So going back to the study, I'm an applied researcher. So I kind of want to go all the way. 
I want to go all the way from theory, so trying to understand the problem, um, trying to um, you know, fix the problem from the theoretical side, then also kind of do a prototype and actually try to make the theory work. But I don't want to stop here because um, the theory can be flawed and also the prototype, just having a prototype doesn't tell you anything about whether this is actually useful. So I also want to validate this by conducting an experiment um, based on my background. I think experiments are a very good way and I will say in a minute why. But I also don't want to stop here because I want also to see it implemented, because only then actually people can benefit from this, and this is not only disappearing in some academic paper and nobody uses it, so I'm also striving to have this implemented. So why um, did we actually run an experiment? The obvious thing is that we can actually test the theory, we can generate data and then actually see if, if the theory holds. It gives us a lot of control. We can actually make slight variations within the whole experiment to kind of understand differences. For example, in the experiment that we conducted, we uh, used two different algorithms where we didn't know before which one would work better, and we could actually test this. And we could also run a control, uh, control group where um, I will also show in a minute why this is important. And also we can understand patterns because we basically ask the participants in the experiment to just do some normal nomination behavior. And from this we can base also understand um, their preferences and how they do nominations and so on. So let, let's look at the experiment. And we actually did this experiment with real participants, so with real people from the .sama com community. We had 115 participants that joined the experiment, and they didn't know much about the experiment themselves or the research questions, so we, we really try to be objective here and not to uh, bias them in any way and really understand whether this works or not. And all the participants joined the first stage of the experiment, and this was an online experiment, so they had some unique code where they could log in. And then we asked them to make a manual select, uh, selection of validators, and we created the page very similar to Polkadot.js, so you had the whole list of validators, you could order by column, and we asked them, please make a selection of seven validators that you would actually feel comfortable with staking. In the second stage, we uh, divided all the people into three different groups. We had algorithm type one and type two, and then we also had a control group and in the control group, we had a kind of control algorithm that simply um, gave a ra like a random selection of seven validators to the participants. And in this stage, in algorithm one and two, they had this back and forth with, with the algorithm. And then they, we could create a recommendation of seven validators for them. In the final stage, we put both lists together. So we had seven in the first stage, seven in the second stage. So we created a list of 14 validators. And then we asked them, please make your final selection of seven validators that you feel most comfortable with staking. And actually here, this was um, what we call incentive compatible, because the participants of the study received two dot for participating. And we told them we are going to stake the two dot for you with the uh, validators that you are selecting. And actually, you get then the benefits, the rewards from this, but also all the slashes. Right? So this was very comparable to the actual situation. Speaking of the payoff, I think another cool thing about this study is that it is among the first studies, first academic studies funded by Treasury. So we did a pr Treasury proposal and asked to pay uh, this participation reward and the staking rewards from Treasury, and this actually got accepted. And so uh, basically the, the participants got the dots from the treasury and they contributed back to science. And I think that is a very cool paradigm for the future where actually academic research could be funded from treasury because also in academia this whole funding process is a little bit opaque and um, having DAOs actually fund research I think is a very cool thing for the future. So let's look uh, a little bit on the data. And we can already say that the behavioral data validates the algorithm. Um, I can't, unfortunately, due to, to time, show you all the results, but we did a lot of analyses and all show that this kind of works. I want to show you two different um, results here. And the first one is that participants seem to love the recommendation. 
when asked in a later questionnaire um, how well the algorithm recommendation actually fit their preferences, they said on a scale from 0 to 3, on average 2.43, which is actually between well and very well. And here we can also see why it's interesting to run a control experiment, because they actually told us that um, the recommendation in the control group was not very good, and that was kind of expected, but it's very important to show this, because critics could say that, okay, you are from Web3 Foundation, they are from the uh, .summer community, they just like everything you do, or they don't want to tell you that actually what you do sucks, so that is not the case, right? So they actually told us, hey, uh, what is this algorithm actually doing? It, it's not very good, and that was expected. The second result is that it's also three times faster, and on average it took 404 seconds for them to find the uh, seven validators in the manual phase, but this back and forth between the algorithm only took 126 seconds. And this result is actually understated, because um, we asked them to select seven validators in the manual phase, but if you imagine that on Polkadot it's up to 16, or on Kusama 24, this goes up quite a lot, right? If, they want, if we ask them to look for 24 validators, this would probably take a lot, a lot longer, whereas the active learning process, this algorithm, that doesn't care, because we can generate a score for every validator and then simply decide to show the best scoring one, the best sc scoring seven one, or the best scoring 24 ones. That doesn't change anything on the, on the time consumed for the algorithm. So the left one would actually go up higher, and the right one would stay constant. As I said before, I'm an applied researcher, so I also want to see this uh, implemented. And you can try this hopefully soon. Uh, Ross from Parity is working on a very cool dashboard. I think he is also having a talk about this. And we are actually looking to implement this process there. Here I want to say like a little disclaimer. With this process, I don't want to um, substitute the whole nomination process. So if you already have validators that you trust and you, know, you build some relation with them, um, keep staking with them, of course. But for, for this, is like the people that don't have the time or they don't want to spend the time, or those people that actually have, for example, five validators that they really know, but they want to um, uh, fill up their nominations, uh, this process should help there. Uh, one small outlook uh, about more applications that would be possible. For example, collator selection. So uh, it seems that many parachains also have some delegation system where you can select collators. And if you imagine, like in the not so distant future, you select all the validators on two relay chains and then also on 10, 10 parachains, at some point this gets really tedious. And um, the idea is to actually take the preferences that, that have been learned from the, from the relay chain, for example, to apply it on all the parachains. Another cool feature that is uh, live on Kusama now and will be live on Polkadot are the staking pools. And it turns out that we can actually cre um, um, cr you know, pass this over to staking pools by comparing the recommendation for nominators with actually the nominees of each of the staking pools. And then we can try to find the best match and thereby kind of change uh, the recommendation of an individual nominator to a recommendation to, a, to some pool, right? We can say, hey, you should nominate with this pool because this pool has nominees that best fit your preferences. The last thing that I think would also be interesting is for liquid, liquid staking providers. So it seems that some parachains are offering this liquid staking. And um, I didn't do too much research in this, but it seems that they have some kind of fixed uh, list of validators, and you could actually democratize this whole process by, for example, using the stake in this pool as some kind of governance token, where you could actually uh, vote on these pairwise comparisons, like all the people could vote on these pairwise comparisons, and then you could you know, have a democratized recommendation of best-fitting validators. Um, the paper with all the details on the experiment and also all the technical details on the algorithm is coming. Um, as I said before, this is joint work with three colleagues from academia, and uh, yeah, it's also coming soon.